IEM Cologne is over. You know what time that means or something. Words are hard. That means it's time for scores on the doors. I'm going to rank everyone's tournament. They're getting a grade S to F. F, you suck. S, you're super. Let's go. So we'll go uh, bottom to top as we like to do with these ones. I probably won't talk too much until we get to sort of the top eight. Heroic, they're going to get a C minus. New player, whatever. I'm not too stressed. Um, you know, they got beaten by Nip, but they were two close games. They got beaten by Mouse, but they were two reasonably close games. Uh, yeah, they didn't look their best, but I'm sure they'll improve with more time with Yabby. So C for expectations minus because it wasn't great. Ents. Ah, oh, man, what are Ents going to get? Um, it's going to be, I think, a D. Now nah, we'll give Ents an E. It's pretty poor considering the season Ents had. They did have Vitality and G2, who are two of like the kind of on that cusp of being one of the better teams. Um, although they did both then go on to lose by uh, Nip and Mouse. So how good are they really? But yeah, it, it was a really poor end to the season for Men's considering the heights they'd hit. They never really seemed to recover um, from Spinks kind of going away for Dallas and then coming back into the team. They weren't the same. Spinks and Deha, who had been like putting up star level numbers, um, I think dropped off. And... Hades was the guy who was kind of stepping up a lot of the time, although he didn't really in this tournament. So yeah, E for Ents wasn't the best. I'm sure they'll come back stronger for the next season. Outsiders, uh, I mean, I think they can just have a C, right? It, it's whatever. It's a brand new lineup. Yeah, they were not particularly competitive in either of the series. One like kind of OK map and then one map that was like not very good. Um, but I was expecting nothing from outsiders. They've just put two new players in who are very, very uh, new to the kind of upper echelons of Counter-Strike, and they kind of did seem to struggle a little bit. Particularly Fame, I think in this Fury game it was that I watched. Um, Fame was particularly struggling on CT side. Fury seemed to be targeting him at certain points, but I wasn't expecting anything from outsiders, so C-, minus. I guess, again, I expected them to go out without winning a game, probably. Um, Maybe they could have taken a map if they'd been a bit better. Oh, oh, Nation. Uh, I think this is going to be another C minus just because, again, OO Nation had like their whole kind of brand new thing going. They did at least grab a map. They looked OK in the series against FaZe. They looked OK in the series against uh, Liquid. Obviously, um, in a different world, they 2 0 this series if they take over uh, uh, Mirage, sorry. Um, so it wasn't too bad from OO Nation. I'll give them just a straight up C. Didn't expect them to do much. They've just kind of like, you know, obviously taken basically the whole Godsend lineup, um, you know, try and Cold Zero slot it in, whatever. It was fine. They get a C. Vitality, I think, are going to be pretty disappointed. Um, obviously, they won the series against Ents, but it's an Ents that have been struggling as of late. They lost to Movistar, but did take a map very convincingly. Movistar, obviously the, the hot team of the tournament. This is the one that's disappointing, losing to Maus. Um, particularly when you take the first map and with Ziwu in like pretty decent form, you'd expect them to probably be able to take that series. They get two chances. Um, their overpass isn't great vitality, but their nuke is better. So I think on balance, they probably would have felt like they should have won this series. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's not a disaster for Vitality, so I'll probably give them a D plus. I think they should have at least been competing for a playoff spot considering their recent form, and that's the main reason they're going to get a D and not a C. Um, but yeah, I, I I actually think like they played against one of the hottest teams at the event who probably would have beaten anyone um, except for Navi or FaZe. Those were the only, obviously, the only two teams that beat Movistar were Navi and FaZe. So yeah, you know... Probably should have done better Vitality, but whatever. It's not a disaster. D+, plus, it's fine. G2, I think they're going to get um, the same. They're going to get a D+. Plus. Like, they probably, again, should be competing seriously for playoffs, and they didn't. Um, Nip weren't exactly stellar at this event. Um, you know, beaten by Maus uh, and pretty comfortably beaten by Na'Vi. So, you know, G2 are basically in the same boat as Vitality. D+, plus, they won a series, probably should be doing better, at least competing for the playoffs. Didn't, they get the D+. Plus. Cloud9, uh, God, I think, you know, they, they put Outsiders to bed and then they get 2 0 by Astralis and Liquid. Not good enough. I'm going to give them an E. I think this is a pretty shocking tournament performance for a team that had won Dallas recently and is 
but trying to put themselves back on the map as like one of those truly elite teams and i think they're struggling to do so um i have higher expectations of a team like cloud nine than i do vitality or g2 vitality or g2 have obvious and known problems whereas cloud nine they're supposed to be the team's been together for ages they've been there as the best team in the world before like which what's going on um, so yeah, the expectations are just higher for Cloud9, especially after winning Danis. This was really disappointing. Um, yeah, E, not good. Only reason it's not like getting towards an F is because they did win a series. So fair enough. Spirit, uh, I think Spirit can just have a, a, a C plus, honestly. Like they beat Liquid. Um, they were pretty competitive in this series. It just looked like they didn't have the legs with Wonderful in the lineup. It's going to take time to bet in Wonderful. He's an incredibly young player. He replaced Dexter, who's probably one of the best Orpers in the world at the moment. Yeah, but actually they looked good. They beat Liquid, who proved themselves to be a half-decent team this event. Um... You know, they weren't completely squished by FaZe. There was definitely a lot of signs of life. Um, of the teams that kind of went out at this sort of stage, they had one of the better showings, I think, so they can have a C-plus for their performance spirit. I'm still excited for the spirit team moving forward. I've been converted. Used to be a bit of a chopper hater. I'm, I'm on board now. That guy fucks. NIP. So we'll take a little bit more time to speak uh, about NIP and Furia, but we'll, we'll save the real meat and potatoes but the top six, uh, NIP, I mean, they probably deserve a C plus really. My expectation was that they weren't going to be a lock for the playoffs, um, but that they should be competing for it, which is what they did by making the lower bracket final. They got themselves into that game that gave themselves uh, a chance, mm, maybe just to see, because in this series, they weren't as competitive as you maybe would have liked. They got squished on Mirage, um, you know, beaten on Inferno, which is supposed to be a good map for Nip. They probably should have felt like once they won Vertigo, um, with the kind of way the veto goes, maybe they could 2-0, and they didn't. Um, Brolan's still looking pretty decent. Um, he's clearly kind of going to be set up to be a star player for them. Every time I look at Nip in a, in a tournament run where they don't do so well, though, it's always Rez I'm looking at, and I'm disappointed, man. Like, he was not good uh, throughout this event, and Rez really needs to be that second star. Uh, if Nip want to be a consistently good team. Yes, Hampus is often fantastic and incredibly impactful from that in-game leader role. However, I don't think at Nip are ever going to be a consistent team if it's like Brol and Hampus that need to be the one-two punch. I think you need Rez up there. The tournaments where Nip disappoint, it is usually the tournaments where Rez doesn't perform to his level. Rez has the potential and like the ability to be one of the best riflers in the world. That is why I have such high expectations for him and why I'm disappointed when he has a tournament like he did here where he was like down at the bottom of the pack for like, you know, this just isn't good enough, man. Come on, Rez, sort yourself out. Um, so yeah, but we'll give Nip a C. It wasn't a bad run. They did about what I expected of them. Let's see how they turn up next season um, with a bit more practice under their belts. Fioria! Fuya! Vamos, motherfuckers. Um, so Fioria made the lower bracket run after getting 2 0 by Astralis pretty convincingly. They put outsiders to bed reasonably solidly actually spirit gave them a run for their money and this was a better victory than maybe it looks i think furia um did well to beat spirit here and then obviously got very close um to taking down liquid i think this is a, a c plus for furia just because i think they took one pretty solid series win they were very close in this series i probably would have had furia as one of my playoff teams so maybe you should suggest a C minus or something is in order, but actually on showing, I thought Furia were better at this tournament than they have been in recent months. They've kind of ended the season pretty poorly. Whereas this tournament, it looked a little bit more like the old Furia. So I'm just going to give them a C. I thought it was fine. I'm sure again, Furia will be one of those teams where they'll come back a lot stronger for the next part of the season. Now we got Maus. Now all of these teams, I'm gonna tell you right now, all of these toxic, all of these toxic teams are gonna get good grades because they all performed well. And in the case of these quarterfinals teams, every single one of them overperformed expectations. We'll kick things off with Maus. They're gonna get a B plus. Maus had uh, something of a kind draw after this navi lost they had heroic who've just swapped a player clearly weren't up 
to their best. They have a Vitality, which have obvious problems. And then they have a Mouse, uh, a Nip, sorry, who are underwhelming in their own right. Now, it's still a good run because it's not as if Vitality and Nip are like absolute pushovers. I would say Heroic were a little bit of a pushover in this game. I think um, it was pretty clear that Heroic weren't up to scratch and were never going to really compete seriously in this series. They just weren't getting enough production out of their, their best players. These two games are obviously more legit. Beating a Vitality with Zero playing well is straight up legit but i think the rest of vitality underwell magus has been playing pretty well recently wasn't so good in this series and then nip again it's just nobody is up there supporting brolan so nip are, are never gonna be able to beat anybody if nobody's up there supporting brolan um this result was really impressive they were very very competitive on the first two maps probably might feel like they could have 2-0 this series because they had a 9-6 lead going into the ct half of nuke so it, a 2-0 was definitely there for the taking for Mouse. And then this one is a little bit disappointing. Um, being brutally honest, BMAS was the drag factor in this series, particularly on Ancient. He was making some absolutely perplexing decisions. Um, my man was, was swinging stuff for no reason, um, just dying one for nothing a lot weird rotations. Just, he was not having a very good series overall, but on Ancient, he, really probably was the difference that meant that Astralis could take Ancient reasonably comfortably. Um, it, You know, it wasn't a blowout by any stretch of the imagination, but Astralis were the better team on this map and were good value for their victory. Um, So I think a B-plus is fair. They'd probably get an A if this series had been a win. They might even get an S if they make a top four run. But I think not quite being as good on or in this series as maybe i thought they would be um i think their stars stepped a little bit off the gas pedal it seemed like um so yeah b plus it was a good tournament for sure for mouse definitely made me a lot more excited for this team than i have been at any point i have not been a big believer in mouse not because of the players i think the four players jdc bmas frozen um and Torzi obviously are all very very good but i was not convinced by dexter's calling uh dexter was calling much better i think this event the t-sides were amazing and mouse were one of the best t-sided teams so yeah i'm i'm a lot more excited moving forward i want to see if mouse can do stuff in the next season i think they will probably be better than they have and hopefully they can make some more playoff runs and we can really see this very very young team that's the thing like four of these players are like early 20s late teens um there's definitely a lot of uh room for growth with mouse and i think they'll they'll get there next up we have liquid and obviously liquid again like mobby star uh, not Movi Star, sorry, like Mao's kind of underwhelm throughout the season. Um, a little bit different than Mao's in the fact they obviously had a stand in for this event and the stand in um, Yekindar. You know, he had a series here where he showed his insane peak and carried the series. He unlocked Elige. As you can see, Elige was playing very well um, throughout and 100% that was down to Yekindar. Yekindar was taking a lot more of those aggressive. Um, leading the pack type roles and it freed up a liege to do what i think he does best which is make him the star rifler don't have him being aggressive taking space yes on another team a liege could do that and do that very very well but when he's on this liquid team he's the best player so put a liege in the star roles man let him pop off and he did that at this event up until the movie star rider series where it was okay but i think a liege didn't quite hit the heights we'd seen from him the rest of the tournament. And so I think that was the main difference here. I think if Elise is putting up the star numbers that he had been up to the tournament, maybe this uh, series goes a little bit differently. I think ultimately Movistar were good value for the win. They were comfortable winners on Ancient. Um, they were better in the first half. It was only really the second half of Inferno, basically, where Liquid looked like the better team, really. Outside of that, Movistar were good win value for their win on Ancient, pretty good value for their win on Vertigo, uh, and probably should have closed out Inferno, had a big first half, Liquid mounted a comeback, Movistar just couldn't get anything going on their CT side of Inferno. 
So I think Liquid get a B plus as well. I think it's a very similar run to Mal's. I think they'll be a little bit disappointed that they maybe couldn't have have made this series a bit closer. I think their Inferno was good, but I think on Ancient and Vertigo, they were lacking for somebody to really step up and be the carry force. Um, but it was still a great run from Liquid. I would love to see them keep this lineup together. If Yekindar can't go to like a decent European team and it looks like there isn't really a good European option for him, um, G2... I think had a look at Yekindar, but then decided not to go for it because the swap would obviously be for Jax. And I think they decided to stick with, um, or at least I heard they were going to stick with their lineup. Obviously, Alexi B is going now. So I'm not really sure what's happening over at G2. I heard rumors that they were preferring life under Alexi B. But anyway, that's a massive digression. Um, I hope Yekindar does stick with Liquid because I think Yekindar, Elige, Naf, OC... They all bang, man. And OC was doing some fucking nutty things in the clutch throughout this tournament, but in this series as well in particular. Elige was up there being one of the best players in the world like we know he can be. Yekindar was doing Yekindar things. Mad impact, crazy entry fragging. Um, looks like a fucking savant when he plays sometimes, man. The timings and just his understanding of the game. I like this liquid lineup. I hope they stick with it and give it more time if they can i hope they can sign yekindar and i hope they can make it work um b plus for liquid pretty exciting stuff really next up we have astralis and they are getting an a plus they just fall short of an s because they didn't make the final and this series um if they'd have taken a map, maybe even I would have given them an S. They kind of chucked this Mirage game away, to be honest with you. Um, late in the game, it looked like they couldn't quite handle the pressure, potentially. Maybe the nerves got to them a little bit. Because you've got to remember, yeah, they've got Glaive and yeah, they've got um, Zip, who have masses of experience. But like, Blame F and Farley in config particularly blame f actually you don't realize blame f has spent a lot of his time playing like during the covid era hasn't actually done like billions upon billions of lands especially not of this size um farley obviously you know no experience at, at lands really of, of this caliber and this size and stages like this so it's not surprising that Astralis, maybe when they got to this final hurdle, kind of stumbled a little bit. But throughout the tournament, they looked really good. They looked so much improved on their T side. And that has been the thing that has been such a struggle for Astralis is their T sides have been poo poo caca. Um, they also got more production out of their players in general. Farley had some influential halves and, and some great um, great performances at points. Obviously, the overall number's still not really up there, but Zipnix was a lot better than he has been. Blame F still banged. Config was back up there, looking like a star player in certain series. Um, you know, obviously, he was huge in this series. This Astralis is the best... Astralis have looked in a long time. My worry is I still think they're probably going to be looking at Farley and Zip and thinking, mm, we could probably get upgrades. I don't know who you find as an AWPA unless you're willing to take a punt on Acor or you start looking international for your AWPA. I don't know of any AWPAs in the Danish scene. Maybe Device comes back. That is kind of the very um, quiet rumor that is rumbling under the surface is that eventually Device will come back. Um, and Valder is obviously potentially on the market at the moment. Heroic made the jump on Yabby, so he's not going there. But I have heard some rumors that Valder still might end up going to EG. The, that rumor that was uh, kind of floating around in um, before this season started, so at the end of last year, like December time, whatever, that has resurfaced. So potentially Valder might go to EG. If I'm Astralis, I probably, honestly, if I can in the offseason, I take the fucking pun, I kick Zip, and I get Valder in. Um, I'm not kicking Farley because he's the Orpa, and I think he's got to have a higher ceiling than Zip, right? I think Zip has been close to washed for a long time, even though recently he's actually played a little bit better overall. Um, but yeah, this was a good tournament for Astralis. They're going to get an A+. It was it was basically the top end of what you could expect from them or what you could reasonably not even expect. That's not the right word because you don't expect Astralis to make top four at this event. But just with what was within the realms of possibility, I think Astralis hit the absolute peak of it. So they're going to get an A+. Really well done, Astralis. I think this is looking much more exciting than it has for a very long time. Movi Star Riders. I, I kind of want to give them an S. 
but I think I'm going to give him an A plus like Astralis. The reason I kind of want to give him an S is just because of the way Movistar Riders have kind of suddenly started looking like a top five team in the world out of nowhere. Took a map off Na'Vi here, and this was a super convincing Inferno win, by the way. They looked much the better team, convincingly. Uh, and then they get to double digits on the other two maps, which isn't too bad. Obviously, they get here in this phase matchup, and they're, they're not good enough. It, it, it is pretty clear that FaZe are the better team. But considering Movistar have only just kind of, in the last month, basically, started to look like a team that can compete at the elite level and actually push on, maybe be a top 10 team on recent form, maybe be like a top five team. Um, but they generally just look really good all of a sudden. It makes sense. Some Pius is putting up the star numbers more consistently than I think he has up to now for this team, especially in the biggest events. Deaths and Davy G were much improved on their production front, particularly Davy G, who is normally the bottom feeder for the squad. But I'll be brutally honest, Deaths in the past has not impressed me. Particular halves where it just looks like he doesn't know how to play at the top tier level i'm thinking sometimes his ct side on a mirage where he just plays on the balcony every single round not understanding that he's just gonna die because utility is gonna clear him out but those two were looking so much better and then mopoz um is mopoz mopoz is so so very aggressive mopoz is so key to the way they play he aggressively lurks on t side um, on CT, he's often very, very aggressive as well, getting in the face of people, getting the opening kills. And Mopoz is a huge part of the reason, along with some parts, why Movistar Riders' opening kill percentages, particularly on the CT side, were fucking unbelievable throughout this event. Um, so Movistar are going to get the A-plus from me. I would expect to see more of Movistar moving forward. I feel like this was replicable. This was something that we could see again from Movistar Riders and the level of play they're producing. I'm still thinking they need some slight tweaks to be really, really consistently good. I question whether having Davy G and Deaths playing bomb sites together on CT is the smartest thing a lot of the time, because you do see halves and maps where the other team will will hit the Deaths Davy G bomb site over and over again. And I think FaZe did it on um I'm thinking of a game, I can't remember what it was. I think it was actually this Liquid game where Liquid kept going A, which is the Davy G Deaths bomb site on the T side of Inferno, and Davy G and Deaths just looked out of their depth. They looked like they didn't know how to deal with what was coming at them. They didn't seem to know how to switch things up. Um, you know, trying to hold down the A bomb site on Inferno is often down to just being mad fraggers and just being able to set up those crossfires and multi kill every time. You're not going to get that out of Death and Davy G on a consistent basis, I don't think. So I think there are still tweaks that Mobby Star Riders could maybe make um, without, I think, making a roster change. I think just within the way they play the game with the five players they have at the moment. Um, but they look really good at this event, A plus for sure. Um, I'm really looking forward to what we see from Bobby Star Riders moving forwards. That means we got to take second place, Nartus Vincere. Now, how do we characterize this Na'Vi run? Because it looks pretty good, right? Obviously, they're dropping maps, um, but they do the thing that they like to do, which is um, in certain series, they just blow teams out of the water like here. You know, they're 32 to 10 over the two maps, Nip, and just absolutely dumpster them. Like, Nip don't look like they have a hope in hell of getting anywhere near them in this series. Um, you know, they do the same to Mouse, but on Inferno after a wobbly first two maps um, where Mouse had chances on Nuke or had a chance on Nuke. Like I say, 9-6, T-half. Mirage gets away from them in a very, very close game. Um, despite some heroics, there was a 1v4 clutch from, from Simple on this map. And then Movistar Riders, they lose Inferno, but then they kind of step things up and they do outclass their opposition on the next two. Um, you know, they outclass Australis pretty convincingly on Nuke. It, 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 yeah, there wasn't really much of a, a chance that this game was going to go the other way. And then Mirage looks really shaky until Bit kind of comes in through in the second half and bails them out. Um, a lot of crazy situations where Bit was having mad impact and, and basically putting the round on his back. So... This is hard for me to characterize for Na'Vi. I think I'm going to give them an S- minus because they they got all the way to the grand final without too much stress in one of the biggest events of the year. I think they had a reasonable bracket. They played Movistar, one of the hottest teams in the event. 
Um, they played Maus, who were a team that were very hot at this event. They played Astralis, who were a team that was very hot at this event. So they played three of the teams that finished top four. So that deserves a lot of credit and shows you the strength of schedule. And they actually played against everyone except Liquid, who made top six. So that shows you the strength of the schedule that Na'Vi had, which is why I'm going to give them an S minus. And they were very, very competitive in this grand final. And on a different day, maybe it can go a different way. They obviously all of the maps except one got to at least 29 rounds. The thing with Na'Vi is it's it's hard to say whether this version of Na'Vi can be as good as we saw them at Blast consistently. Being brutally honest, in this grand final, SDY was a little bit of a problem. He was a bit of a problem on Inferno in particular. I think he was he was problematic. I think FaZe were targeting him a lot on CT, going towards A, going towards sort of short and, and apartments and trying to put SDY under pressure. And I think in general, he struggled across the series for raw fragging input he started to have a few more impact frags um i'm particularly thinking on nuke he had some impact on ancient towards the back end of the game he had a few important impact frags but i do think sdy was a bit of a problem in this series along with bit bit really underperformed but so it makes me wonder moving forward what the plan is for navi because i know simple said in the interview that sdy forgot some stuff and made some mistakes just in terms of like the game plan i think on certain maps um i can't remember exactly what simple said in the post game but it was something along these lines and so you wonder where navi are at moving forward whether they feel like sdy is is worth the pun or if they're gonna look for something potentially better that they can get in the off season um we know the cis region is absolutely awash with talent it's fucking ridiculous like you know even uh, particularly looking at orpers they've got like deco wonderful obviously just got picked up by spirit waro 2k there's a bunch of bunch of players coming out of that cis region I've, I've just named you three orpers off my head who i think could could make the step up to a tier one team and and be good um obviously they're not going to get an orper but it's just representative of the talent they have in that region so S minus for this event. It was very, very good. It was, they were clearly number two. And I think FaZe and Na'Vi are by a pretty decent margin, the clear one, two teams in the world right now, particularly considering Ents and Cloud9 were less than convincing in this tournament. And in the case of Ents in particular, just less convincing entirely towards the end of the season. Let's see where Na'Vi are when they come back from the player break whether simple's still playing who knows maybe he decides he wants his break now whether sty is still part of the team or if they go in a different direction um but yeah s minus for this event and navi were the second best team probably in the first half of the year although i do think ents just the sheer consistency they showed at the start of the year or at least you know from kind of pro league on um you could make an argument it was ents Obviously, that brings us to the kings of the castle, king of the castle, phase. They get an S+. Plus. They didn't drop a map up until the grand final. They put OO Nation to bed comfortably. They put Spirit to bed comfortably. They put Astralis to bed pretty comfortably. Like, yes, these aren't blowout games, but they are... They are games that phase are in control of. They are games that phase don't ever in my opinion feel like they're going to lose it was a classic phase in that they they got production out of pretty much everyone rops i think probably was overall their best player up until the final but rain oh sorry boys and girls but rain and twists and brokey all had their moments as you can see here this is pretty much um what you're looking at at least three sometimes even four of the players are all having like pretty good ratings this is what phase do they have a way carrigan has a way of making all of the players shine in fact carrigan is probably the only guy who can mash as much talent into a team and make it work the way he does on navi you still have 
one clear absolute mega star and then a couple of of stars behind you still have that kind of hierarchy where it's like simple one electronic two or bit two and three perfecto four and then obviously sdy is going to be the bottom feeder whereas on phase it's pretty much like one two three any order brokey twists and rops rain often will actually jump into that one two three slot somewhere but you know usually number four and then you know carrigan is his carrigan he's gonna call he's gonna have impact rounds but outside of that he's often gonna go like one and four in opening jewels in a half phase just look like they found the right formula they found a style of play which suits everybody gets mad production out of everybody they're so difficult to put away in these kind of grand final moments in tight series it feels like even if you do take a map off them which isn't unfeasible a phase will drop maps um in these big series it feels like they're always going to come through yes we know they had their wobble you know dallas wasn't very good second at Rubet, it was better but you know the whole kind of like dallas blast wobble that they had um i'll be honest i think motivation is probably an issue after you've just won a major um it's gonna feel weird trying to get yourself up for the next couple of tournaments i really wish majors ended the season i really really do because it feels like that's what the season's built up to and then this weird like last leg of the season that comes after a major feels bizarre like i struggled to give a shit about dallas because it was right after the major you know, the fatigue was there, the the hangover was there from the major, not just in terms of being, you know, tired because you've watched so much Counter-Strike and, and emotionally gotten invested in it more so than you would a normal tournament and stuff. Um, but the hangover for the teams as well, it, it seems pretty obvious. It, a lot of teams, I think, had their kind of wobbles after the major. I think Furia were nowhere near as good after the major. FaZe had their wobble, Ents had their struggles. Um you know virtually everybody had some sort of problems after the major not virtually everyone a lot of teams had um problems after the major but phase get the s plus they're the best team in the world right now they were the best team of 2022 so far those are your scores on them doors let me know if you agreed with them let me know if you didn't i might pretend to care and if you didn't like this video, you're probably a filthy Valorant player. Shame on you. Shame.